Hi, welcome to the kitchen. I'm John Tapper, Chef de Cuisine here at Thoroughbreds Chop House and Seafood Grill in beautiful Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And today we're going to take you through the steps to making veal demi-gloss. Uh, all the tips, all the things you should avoid, uh, so stay tuned. Now the first step to making veal demi-gloss is having the right veal bones to start with. So on this first tray we have a two diamond veal bone. Now mainly they're just scraps, kind of a lot of rib pieces and just little odds and ends that you get from your butcher or from your distributor. On the second tray, we have the four diamond veal bones. Now they're about a dollar to a dollar fifty more per pound, uh, but literally it's, it's worth it. It's got a ton of marrow. It's got everything you're looking for for a nice veal demi-gloss. And I like to mix it up. I get a case of each, that way I get, you know, kind of the best of both worlds. Uh, so with this, we have 20 pounds of Spanish onions. We have a cup of bay leaves cup of garlic cloves, a cup of peppercorns, black, one cup dried oregano, one cup dried thyme, salt, pepper, one can of fancy tomato paste, number 10 can. We have 10 pounds of peeled carrots, two bunches of fresh parsley, 10 pounds of fresh celery, and this is for our wine selection. We have a bottle of Chardonnay, we have one bottle of Marcella, and one bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon. That's gonna give it a little bit of flavor and also a little bit of color. And a good thing to note when you're making veal demi-gloss, whether it be at the restaurant or at home, is I'm making a large batch to support a steakhouse. But really what's important in this video is the technique. You just wanna follow this technique and the tips I'm gonna give away uh, kinda at the end of the video when I go into the reduction stage, really helpful tips. So. We got our veal bones salt and peppered, and what we're gonna do next is get that into a 500 degree oven for about 60 minutes to get these veal bones nice and brown, even a little bit of char. So we got our ovens loaded up with these nice seasoned veal bones. And like I said, we're just gonna roast them 500 degrees for 60 minutes. So we'll come right back. So the next step while you have those nice veal bones in the oven roasting is we just wanna do a little bit of the prep uh, so what we did is we chopped up our Spanish onions, we chopped up our carrots, and what I like to do at this point is caramelize our tomato paste. Now most chefs caramelize the tomato paste in a rondo with the vegetables, but I came up with spreading it over a sheet pan and just caramelizing those sugars with a torch. Saves a lot of time, also saves a lot of work for your dishwasher trying to get the burnt tomato paste out of your rondo. So basically you just take it on the sheet pan, and we're just gonna caramelize it with a torch and it's gonna cook the sugars and just make a really great product. So about 10 minutes, those bones are done. We're gonna take those out and we'll continue on with our process. All right, let's take a walk and go check these veal bones. Let's see what's going on in the bottom. Oh yeah, those are looking nice. Now this is what we're looking for, is we're looking these bones to be nice and golden brown roasted. And even a little bit of char is good. So these bones are looking good. Uh, those are going to be ready for the stock pot. Now let's check the uh, top oven here. And same thing. These veal bones are looking golden brown, caramelized, and ready to turn into our veal stock, which then we're going to turn into, of course, our veal demi. So next, we'll go into the phase of getting the pan scraped and, and, and in the stock pot. Now there's a couple important tips when you're pulling these pans out of the oven. Of course these trays are 500 degrees so you want to make sure that your towels are dry and you also want to take each sheet pan and get as much of this rendered fat out of here as possible from the start because you don't really want that in your veal stock. It's going to mess it up, it's going to make it gross and you're just going to have to strain that fat off later. So the more fat you get off from the start, the better off that you're going to be uh, when we start to make our veal demi. All right, in the next phase of our veal demi process, we're going to get these roasted veal bones into our stock pot. And what I like to do is just get them from the oven and bring them over to my steam jacketed kettle. And I'm just going to take a spatula and get all these little bits of flavor off. So all these little bits of flavor are gonna contribute color and as well as flavor to your sauce. Uh, some, some chefs call them fond, F-O-N-D, and they're very important to your demi-making process. 
So we're gonna get a good scrape and then we're gonna go ahead and just kind of deglaze it with a little bit of water. A little bit of water and we're gonna wash a lot of that fond off of here. I find it's easier to deglaze your pans like this than try to do them over the stove with wine. It's a little more labor intensive. So here's what we got folks. We got all of our pans deglazed and all of our veal bones in our stock pot and uh, so everything's in now. We're ready to go with the next stage of the process in our veal demi-gloss. So what we're going to do next, we're just going to save those pans that we roasted the veal bones on and we're going to put our chopped vegetables on each of those pans. We got the carrots, celery, onion, and we're just going to go ahead and, and cover these vegetables with a little bit of oil, salt and pepper, some dried thyme. We're going to roast them for 20 minutes, 500 degree oven, and we got a chance to deglaze these pans one more time just to make sure we got all the flavor off there. So like I said, we're gonna put them in the oven and check back in just a minute. Now that we got our vegetables sweat and roasted in the oven, I'm just gonna pull these out of here and uh, hit the onions with a torch, get that in the stock pot and continue on with the next steps of our veal demi glace process. So before we char up the onions, we're just gonna get the rest of our vegetables in the pot. That's when we have a chance to, to do the second round of deglazing. So we'll get those carrots in there. We're just gonna hit our pan with water once again. And it's just gonna continually lift flavor off of these pans. So you just wanna repeat that process for all the vegetable pans. The next step in the process to help add flavor and color to the sauce is we're just gonna char up the onions. You don't really want to burn them too much, you just want to get a little bit of char on the very outside of the onion and it's going to help tremendously with the color of your veal stock which is going to help tremendously with the color of your demi. So here's what you end up with is a little bit of char on your onions, not overly charred but charred enough to give a little bit of flavor to your sauce. All right, the next phase in our process is we're gonna add our charred tomato paste. We're just gonna add that right to the water. Just like that. Helps if you have a rubber spatula to get it off the pan. Then we're gonna have one cup dried thyme. One cup dried oregano. One cup bay leaves. One cup whole peppercorns. Two cups whole garlic, fresh. Two bunches fresh parsley with the stems. One large bottle Cabernet Sauvignon. One regular size bottle dry Marcella. and one large bottle of Chardonnay. And we're just gonna get that in the pot and then stir up the ingredients. All right, folks, welcome back to the kitchen and it's been 72 hours we've been cooking our veal stock which we're going to turn into our veal demi glaze and I want to come in and show you what we're working with yeah, after 72 hours we're going to have the vegetables pretty much cooked down the bones are going to have the marrow and the fat rendered out and it's going to have a nice beautiful brown rich color that's what we're looking for we're not looking for a lighter colored stock like a chicken stock or something like that and the reason I cook it for 72 hours 
it's a little bit longer than textbook, but we don't want to spend all this time and money on a veal demi-gloss and not get a rich, dark color and enough gelatin in our sauce. So I just go ahead, I cook it for 72 hours and get a nice, rich, brown veal stock, which in turn, we're going to make a nice, rich veal demi-gloss. So we're gonna come back a couple minutes with our strainers, we're gonna strain out this beautiful liquid and start our reduction process, so stay tuned. Now once we start our straining process, this is just a quick little tidbit that is helpful. If you barely tilt your kettle over, uh, what we wanna do is strain out the fat. There's gonna be about an inch or so of fat just floating on top of this stock. And if we can strain that off first very carefully, you're gonna have better results when we begin to make our reduction. So we're gonna do that first and then get into our straining process. So now that we're in our straining process, we're just going to get a spoon or something to hold back the vegetables and bones. And we're just going to use our tilt skillet to our advantage. We're just going to go ahead and strain all of this stock off of here and continue, repeat the process until this kettle's empty. And then we're just going to discard the bones and the vegetables uh, after we do that and we're going to begin our reduction phase. Now one more useful tip as far as straining this stock is you want to go ahead and with the strainer is use a china cap and a fine chinois. That way we get the, we make sure we get the bigger pieces and all the fine particles out of our stock. So you definitely want to use both during the straining process. So now the straining process is complete and this is what we're left with here. And this is by far the least glamorous of the entire process is getting rid of these bones and vegetables. Uh, so what I like to do is load up some half pans and then start making our trips to the dumpster. Uh, but what we did here is we got our smaller steam kettle uh, full of the veal stock and I got it cranked up. It's gonna be begin to boil in a few minutes and that's where we're gonna start the reduction. Now I like to leave a small amount of room in the top here because once that gets a rolling boil, it will spill over. Uh, so you gotta be careful. And I'll show you what we're working with here. I've got a smaller kettle going. And this is just a, that way we don't fill that entire kettle. This is just gonna give it a little bit of relief. So I'm gonna boil this away. We're gonna continue to boil the veal stock till at least 60% reduced. And then I'm gonna show you some tips on how you wanna fortify it and give it a little bit more flavor. So we'll check back in, you know, every hour or so, uh, check how far the reduction has gone, and we'll go take it till the entire process is finished. Now what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna check on our demi real quick, and we got, this is about 50% reduced uh, to what we had before, so you can see how it's starting to build a nice, rich, thick sauce. Now this is where a lot of chefs would add a thickener such as roux or an espagnole. Uh, but what I like to do is continue reducing and we're just gonna add, I call it my trick. Uh, but in a few minutes, I'm gonna show you how I fortify my demi and maybe it's something you've never seen before. So stay tuned. All right, folks, next step in the process is this is beginning to naturally thicken. So what we're gonna do next is begin our fortification process. Uh, so what we're going to do is take unflavored gelatin that we bloomed in some cold water and we're just going to begin to add that to our demi oh, about a half pound at a time until our demi is fortified. It's going to be about four to five pounds throughout the fortification process. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. And this is a great, this is a great way to fortify your demi. As we know, gelatin is made of mostly ground up bone material, cartilage, feet, and such like that. And it just gives the demi a thicker richness and also a better mouthfeel. So like I said, we're going to continue to reduce this down to the appropriate thickness. Uh, but right in this stage, we're going to go ahead and add our uh, gelatin. Stay tuned. All right, and we're finally through our reduction phase of making the veal demi. And I just want to show you what we, the final, final product, what we're left with is this thick and rich veal demi-gloss. And that's through the natural thickening, uh, through the roasting of the bones, and also through the fortification of the extra gelatin, four to five pounds, uh, we end up with this awesome, awesome demi-gloss. 
And this batch was a large batch, like I said, to support a steakhouse. So what we ended up here was with 36 quarts. Uh, that's a little bit more than what you're gonna use at home. But as far as if you're gonna make it for a restaurant, if you're a chef watching this video, it's about $9 a quart to make it. And it's anywhere from 12 to $20 a quart to buy it. So it comes down to a preference of what do you want it to taste like? Uh, do you want it to be authentic, uh, house made, or do you want to buy it? The bot stuff is really convenient and it has a good flavor. However, it's, uh, it's just not as good. And what I have here for a quick simple plate up is just some beef medallions that I've sous vide. And just want to show you, I'm gonna put this demi just on the side. And here we are. Uh, it takes about four days, but it's, it's a beautiful product. And if you can advertise that you're making your own demi-gloss in-house, I think it's a great selling point for any steakhouse. So thanks for watching. Remember to click or subscribe Food Fox, Chef John Tapper II, and we'll go ahead and share more videos. All right, thank you.